Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Reeves. I'm a practicing architect and also professional Vectorworks trainer. Over the years, I've specialized in providing professional training for architects all over the UK and also in Europe, specializing particularly in 3D and BIM workflows. Today, I'd like to share with you a few of the hints and tips that I've developed from my new book, Innovative Vectorworks BIM, which is available for download and I'll give you the link at the end of this video. So let's go ahead. I'll just scroll through to an example chapter. Um, here you can see my first chapter is actually featuring my own practice. And there's a really nice book. There's lots of information. We've got 122 color pages featuring practices from all over the UK, showing the kind of work that they are using Vectorworks for, particularly with emphasis on 3D and BIM workflows. So please uh, have a look at the free chapters on my website. You might find those interesting. They're available to download. Okay, let's carry on with the tips. So let's have a look at tip number 12. Um, using guides for construction information. This is very useful. When we're designing our buildings, often we'll have um, some kind of grid lines. And we might want to basically lay out some grid lines of the building. But we really want to kind of save so I'm just duplicating a few of these lines. Okay, brilliant. Let's select all of those. And basically, I'm going to go to the Modify menu, down to the Guides, Make Guides command. Now, when we make the guides, you'll notice not only do they become locked, they automatically put themselves into a Guides class. Um, having them locked is actually quite useful. However, if we do want to unlock them, we just simply right-click, and we can select Unlock. There still remain guides, and we can now manage the visibility of those guides using the navigation palette. Also, if you go to the menu again, you'll notice there's show, hide, and also delete all guides. So when you're finished, you can delete them or just leave them in the file and hide them on a class. Okay, we'll move on to tip number 13. And this is to use industry standards when you're setting up your Vectorworks models, particularly for BIM workflow. Now, the really good thing with Vectorworks classes is not only can we click the new button and basically type in the name of the class you'll notice that if we click import classes we can actually select from a number of different built-in lists including a uni class which is a, a standard um, industry standard set of classes based on architect interior and also landscape so for example let's go to the architect element and function Let's open up this a little bit. You can see lots of classes available in here. So basically we could select the ones we need by holding the command key down, just selecting a bunch of classes that we're looking to bring into the file. Click OK. All those class names come in and they're all organized perfectly in the industry classes. Excellent. Okay, the next tip is polysmoothing. Now this is a really nice, useful little tip, particularly when you're doing organic shapes. So I'm going to get my polygon tool, shortcut number eight. Basically, I'm going to map out a rough shape of something that I'm thinking of doing, perhaps some sort of landscaped area or um, organic form. Now it doesn't look very smooth at the moment. Luckily though, if we go to modify, we can go down to polysmoothing and we can apply different types of polysmoothing. So let's go for Bezier smoothing to begin with. That's quite nice. And let's go for a different type of smoothing. Let's go for the cubic spline one. This is particularly good as all of the points that we clicked, the curve will pass through those exact points. So this is actually very good when you want to create things like um, electrical wiring diagrams as well. I'll give you an example. So basically you could click, 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 click through all of your various lights and you, you go to modify, select, cubic spline smoothing and you would see that the shape would actually pass through. So just turn off the solid fill, maybe change the pen to something a bit more appropriate, a dotted line, and you can see that that would be a very nice way to represent electrical fittings. Excellent. Okay, we're going to move on. Nice easy one for you now. Tip number 15, holding shift down while we're drawing. Now, most of you will know this, I'm sure, but if you hold shift down when you're drawing a rectangle, you will get a perfect square. 
If you hold shift down when you're drawing a line, it will constrain you or lock you in to orthogonal or set angles that you may have introduced in, into your design. Sometimes it's quite helpful to introduce other set angles. So if you double click on the constraints palette, you'll notice that basically you can actually program in additional angles available here. So for example, if we type in 17 degrees, now when I click and hold down the shift key, it will snap between zero and 17 degrees. So great for sites that involve working at awkward angles. Tip number 16 is how to actually ignore objects that are directly under the cursor. There's a couple of ways we can do this. So let me give you an example. Um, let's give ourselves an area of colored fill here and a bunch of objects within the shape itself. Now, normally it's fine. We can select via a marquee sort of dragging around, but sometimes if we're zoomed in particularly tight, we can't actually get to the edge of the screen. So rather than have to zoom out, if we hold shift down, you'll notice the cursor will gray out. And this enables us to essentially drag select even while we're over the shape. So basically you'll see that it won't select the underlying shape. And that's pretty useful. Another similar tip here, um, perhaps one that's going to come a bit later, is using the B key. That also allows us to select shapes that are actually underneath. But I'll come on to that one later. OK, so let's move on to tip number 17. Um, this is a really nice one when you're using 3D capabilities of Vectorworks, as we're going to see. So basically, let me go ahead and open a file. OK, so here we are with our project file opened. Um, this is for a new build house um, for some clients that I've been working on. Um, we can just see the ground floor at the moment. So the tip here is really to use the saved views to record preset angles and perspectives. So I'm going to drop down to a pre-prepared presentation um, for my first meeting with a client. Here we go. We've got the entrance there. Um, we can then skip to the view from the hall, which is nice. And basically, you'll notice that it records the rendering style and also any lights that may or may not be on and also the visibility of any classes as well. So it's very nice. We can easily pre-prepare a little presentation for the client by using our save views. Tip number 18 is to make the most of view transition animations. Basically, Vectorwitz can now perform simple animations between views. To enable this, just go to your Vectorwitz preferences Go to the interactive tab and just make sure that you enable view transition animation. So let's just go to our 3D file and switch across to this one. So basically, let me go ahead and save a new view. Let's call this ISO 1. And let's just change through to a different view altogether. Let's go to that side and we'll save another view, ISO 2. And what you'll notice is the two things work really well together. Not only have we got the save view, We've also got a nice transition where it actually animates slightly between those views. Sometimes, depending on the model size, it's a little bit smoother than others, and obviously depending on how much you're actually animating. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the first video on the hints and tips from my book, Innovative Vectorworks BIM. For those of you who would like to find out a bit more about the book or the kind of training that I can offer, please have a look at the link. The website is www.jra-vectorwitz-cad.co.uk. I've got this as a hyperlink in my file, so if we click on that, just going to have a quick visit on the website. So here's the front page. There we go. There's me. And if you're interested in finding out a bit more about the hints and tips or the book, please click on the store page and Innovative Vectorwitz BIM. And here we can see we've got the full book in uh, full Technicolor 24.95. If you just want a PDF copy that we can uh, send you via email, it's £15. Uh, international delivery, £30. And also, you can also buy just the hints and tips for £10. Okay, well, that just about wraps up this video. Thanks for listening. See you next time.